Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the tiny Teutonic Terror behind me, the Bogner Ecstasy Mini 30 Watt Guitar Amp. <laughs> This eye-catching little brute does exactly what its name implies. It successfully captures the much respected and sought after high gain tones of the red channel of its legendary bigger brother, the Bogner Ecstasy. And please, don't let its compact size fool you. It might look cute, but it's anything but a toy. Housed in a small but sturdy wooden box, the Ecstasy Mini delivers the goods in spades. And, as you'd expect, it excels at producing the high gain crunch and lead tones that have made the Ecstasy line a go-to for countless guitarists all over the world. Here's a few examples. <laughs> This said, thanks to the incredible versatility its four tone shaping switches offer, it can also do subtle sonic stuff equally as well as it does stun, just like this. <laughs> or even less gain, like this. Or even pretty close to clean. Darn close, in fact. Now, as already mentioned, the Ecstasy Mini is a 30 watt head. It's also solid state, meaning there are no tubes lurking in it, not even one single tiny glass bottle. Don't fret though, as you've already heard, even with my bad playing, it's clear that this mini monster has that all important Bogner DNA in its very tonal soul. <laughs> I've also got to add this, this amp feels really good when you play it. And as you and I know, feel is really, really important. Now, how is this achieved with a solid state entity like this? Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to talk to the amp's creator, Reinhold Bogner, so he can give you the full story, the full inside scoop. So before that, let's take a quick look at the amp's front and rear panels, hear a few more sounds, and then I'm going to let Reinhold take over. <laughs> The amp's front panel boasts six chicken head controls, and as you may expect, they're the usual suspects we all know and love. So going from right to left, we have gain, bass, 
middle, treble, presence, and last but certainly not least, volume. Oh, and incidentally, the bass, middle, and treble controls are all active, meaning they can add as well as subtract. So bear that in mind when dialing in sounds. If you want more, you can have it. The four front panel switches I mentioned earlier are labeled as follows. Pre-EQ, mid-frequency, gain, and variac. The gain and variac switches are two-way affairs. The gain goes from low to high, duh, Think old school plexi when in the low setting and a modern hot rodded one when in high mode. Here's the low setting with the gain control at 12 o'clock. <laughs> And now with Digital Magic, I'm going to change guitars and go to the high setting with the gain control still at 12 o'clock. That's quite a contrast, isn't it? So as you can see, this switch alone obviously broadens your tonal palette quite considerably. The Variac switch is a simple on and off affair. And as you might expect from its name, when it's on, it produces a dropped voltage dynamic compression to both the sound and feel of the amp. Many call this the brown sound due to the late great Edward Van Halen. Here's a lick with no Variac. <laughs> And here's the exact same lick, well, as close as this hat can duplicate it again, with the Variac switch kicked in. Now, as you might expect, there is of course a slight volume drop when you kick in the Variac switch, but I gotta tell you, to these hands and to this head, the resulting compression feels great when you're playing. I don't think either lick was played well, but the second one was less sucky than the first. The other two front panel switches, pre-EQ and mid-frequency, are both three-way affairs. And as you've already heard from my dodgy playing examples, they're really, really effective. As for what they do, Reinhold will explain that in a minute. As for the rear panel features of the Ecstasy Mini, they're really simple. As you'd expect, it has two speaker output jacks and also the input for the universal power supply that comes with the amp. The other thing on the back is the effects loop. So you've got a send and return jack for said loop and it's a series loop. And that's where I put my MXR reverb and delay pedals just to hide and smear my playing. <laughs> Right, enough of my nonsense. As promised, let's go on a Zoom call with Mr. Bogdan himself so we can learn more. As you probably already know, Reinhold is one of the rock world's most respected and also enigmatic and colorful characters. I don't mind admitting, I'm really looking forward to chatting with him, so let's get right to it. Reinhold, first and foremost, thanks so much for joining us. And secondly, congratulations on a wonderful amp. Now I see you've got the big boy there, but I guess they didn't send you the small one, like this thing here, the thing we're discussing. You've got the box, but oh, where is your well, amp? Let me, maybe, let me see, let me see, let me see, maybe here. Ooh, magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is here. It got here in time. And uh, look at that. Look how small it is. Yeah, this is perfect actually because you can really see the, you know, the the contrast between its big brother right. and its much smaller yeah. but very powerful and great sounding siblings. Small only in size, not in sound. There you, you know? go, which is something I want to discuss <laughs> with you. Now, basically, you know, since you literally exploded on the rock scene in the like early 90s with both the Ecstasy and the Ubershaw, you've become synonymous right. with great and very versatile rock tones but there have always been all tube now this little bad boy here is deserving of the name ecstasy 
but it's solid state, not one little glass bottle in it, but it sounds, and more importantly, it feels great too. Um, what was your MO behind making the, the, like the mini version after all of the renditions of the big and most you know, famous ecstasy? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I mean, there's always people that, you know, if they have a complaint about my amps, it would be mainly the price, you know. Right. <laughs> so, like, uh, for, you know, for almost three decades, we all, we've been looking for some kind of ways to kind of make it cheaper. But, you know, like, we're a small company. We don't really uh, set up for mass production or anything like this, you know. So, and also, I don't want to kind of expand to the level of it that we kind of, you know, have many, many amps go out the door every day, you know, and lose control over the quality. So like we, we, it took a while, you know, to figure out a way to, you know, come to this kind of concept. And also in terms of technology, you know, like with the class D amplifier, you know, things got much more, uh, you know, uh, economic in terms of uh, price and also uh, weight, you know, which is an important factor. So like all those things came together in the last year or so, you know, to make this happen, you know, finally. So, yeah, that's basically how it happened. Like, you know, like it was kind of a combination of things, you know, like manufacturing capabilities, the technology, and, uh, yeah, that's where it's... So, like, it's a price, price thing, you know, obviously, and, you know, we had many requests over the years, you know, make something, like, small, like this, in, kind of in this realm, you know, the few hundred dollar kind of price range, you know, uh, especially from Japan and customers like that. And, uh, well, we finally did it. And uh, I'm, I, I was actually surprised messed up how good it turned out. At first, I was a little bit hesitant, you know, kind of like putting my name on something, you know, that kind of, you know, looks like a toy, but it's not a toy, you know. And um, so, but, you know, the more I actually got involved in it and the designing it and uh, actually, I mean, every time I plug in, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. <laughs> yeah, well, as, so, as, yeah. Pe as people just said in the video, I was... I had fun doing the video because it's a fun amp to play. And the other thing I do like about it, it does look like a miniature, it's a mini me ecstasy. It doesn't feel like a toy. You pick it up, it's got, so, it's not heavy, but it's got some weight to it. It's got some heft. It's not a plastic effigy. It's a Yeah, weird. right. I mean, it definitely feels, feels good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's remarkable is that, you know, like a lot of people have been requesting small amps for a long time. And in the past, solid state amps have always been, even when they sounded good, they felt stiff and sterile. They didn't feel right. If they, even if they sounded kind of okay, they, they had a, right. a harshness to them. They, didn't, they had no give. This amp feels right. good, and that's the most important thing to me. I love the sound, but if it doesn't feel right, how did you manage to impart that in such a small thing using no tubes? What was your secret, or will you have to kill me if you tell me? Well, I mean, most of the experience came from the last, this for the past almost like 10 years since I worked with solid state because, you know, before I didn't, and I, I started it with the, uh, with the pedal line, you know, so like with the pedal line, I started kind of dabbling, yeah, you know, to see how, you know, like how they can approximate the tube response. And for me, I mean, the, it's the, like funny, you mentioned the, the feel because, you know, like a lot of times when I design stuff, it, it's, it's really the feel that I go for, you know, like, I mean, when you hit the note, you know, and I play myself. So like, it's like, it, it's sometimes stuff, like you said, sounds right, you know, and, but once you pick up the guitar and you're like, nah, something's not right, you know? So for me, the feel is like absolutely important, you know, you know, it's as important as sound, you know? And so like, yeah, I just experimented over the last uh, 10 years, you know, kind of like, you know, with different solid state circuits and, 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 and components. And, and um, this design is, you know, kind of close to some of the pedals I made, like the XTC line, you know, especially the mini line, you know, right. and they're all kind of based on like a more discrete kind of like uh, gain staging with, uh, you know, separate transistor stages, like they kind of emulate like a similar circuit in the tube, you know, in, the, in my tube amplifiers. So like they're actually very, very similar in terms of staging and frequency compensations in between and the coupling and stuff like this. So it's a very 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 kind of straightforward kind of like you know an analogy to the tube to, to the tube world you know it's a very similar kind of architecture in, in the, in the sense. That, I, I just found like you know that it is the best way to uh, achieve the, the feel and the sound and, and also the you know yeah the touch and the, you know the dynamics when you roll on the volume or play light you know it's kind of get that more precisely you can do with op amps and, and diodes you know but I think you have more control if you, if you have a discrete circuit. That's just my opinion. No? I'm well, not saying you can't get good sounds with a diode and a, you know, 
all time, you know. But it's just like for me, maybe I'm more familiar with this kind of circuitry, you know, more discreet, you know. Yeah, so. I would, I'd have to say the proof that, and there's an English saying, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the proof is in the ecstasy minute, because because <laughs> it does feel really good, and that to me is really important because it it makes you play better. Because yeah. you feed off the I mean, amplifier. I mean, hey, if it doesn't inspire you to play, you know, like, you know, but, 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 you know, there's no sense of doing it. So, like, yeah, that's the whole thing. You have to have fun. And this amplifier definitely gives you the inspiration, the fun, you know. Will it sound exactly like the big ecstasy? I mean, obviously, there's some kind of, you know, gift. But, I mean, in terms of having fun and being creative, I mean, this thing, you know, definitely delivers all that, you know. So. What's that saying? Close enough for rock and roll? This is really close, in my opinion, because <laughs> I, I had a blast. And you've got the, and the, and the pre-gain switch is really effective, too, especially on, once again, the low-gain settings. Could yeah, I mean, that, that, that switch is, like, for me, uh, you know, it's, in, it's in, in a lot of my amplifiers, not in all of them, but... And because it, it just like gives you so much more control over the character of the amp. It's, and, you know, it's basically it's a bright switch kind of, um, but with different frequencies. And so that switch in combination with the gain control is like, uh, like it changes, you know, like it gives you so much more color and like variation. The B1, the B1 is, for example, great if you have a strap and you turn the gain quite a bit down. And you want to get more of that clean, semi breakup stuff, you know, right. it's great for that. The B1 and uh, the B2 is really good for the aggressive more stuff, you know. And then, and, and in the B2 setting, I would kind of almost use it as a tightness control or like, you know, like cause it, basically what it does, it's kind of the B2 adds a lot of mid, mids and highs, but the B1 only adds like a, the shimmering highs. Right, you know, it's very high frequencies. And uh, one thing that is really important also that people, uh, should keep in mind once the gain up is like almost all the way up that switch doesn't do much or almost nothing right and so like you lose kind of effectiveness of the switch of the b1 and b2 b1 um, you know you lose like on the lower settings earlier because it has less of an extreme effect and then the b2 you can almost turn up almost all the way and still hear the difference you know but to some people you know maybe turn up the gain all the way and then i don't hear anything it's correct because it doesn't do much when it's all the way up but, you know, so that's the thing that like, you have to kind of play with the combination of the, the gain up and the, the, the setting of the pre -EQ. Yeah, what a concept. Turn your gain down a little bit. Maybe you'll get more out of it. Yeah. The amplifier already has a lot of gain. It's not like it's not like needed like an old amplifier, like a Marshall, where you, of course, you crank it all the way because there's not much gain inherently in it. So, right. But in this, you know, this, this kind of amplifiers have already inherently a lot of the gain. Cranking the gain is like you probably lose a lot of the actual quality of the amplifier, you know, because, you know, like it, it lives in the kind of like maybe, you know, like, I mean, it, it sounds great at cranked up too, but I mean, there's no need for it. You have more nuances and more control over it when it's kind of not all the way up, oh. in my opinion. And then last but by no means least, there's more as another piece of icing on this already pretty, well, extremely versatile and tasty cake. <laughs> what a dumb analogy that was, but ignoring my stupidity, I really like the mid-frequency, you know, that three-way mid-frequency that goes from high, mid, and low, because that really opens up the palette even more color-wise. And this amplifier, we put it in because, you know, since people probably have a speaker camera already and we don't know exactly what that is, you know, it's kind of uh, really cool to kind of, you know, have a little bit more control over it to kind of get similar tones and different cabinets, you know. Yeah, great. So it's so you can fine-tune it to your taste and to your cabinet. Yeah, plus, plus, plus you can also expand it to like a, you know, like almost get like uber esque tones if you want to scoop the mids, you know, like it gets, it gets a little bit more control over that. You know, it's not, it's not made to be like a super shell, but you get really good high gain tones with scoop, you know, kind of uh, characters, you know, and then, you know, you have more control over it, which one you want to scoop, you know? So, yeah, it's just a, a great, you know, expansion of the um, overall palette of tones, you know. And last talking exactly. of tones, uh, the three tone controls are active, which is a very cool move as well. What was your rationale behind making them active as opposed to passive? Similar to like what I just explained with the uh, mid shift, it just made it easier. You know, it made it more kind of you can have you can get more extreme settings, and the bass especially uh, has a kind of a uh, resonance, kind of similar to a four twelve. So you can use the bass. Uh, control to either make up for low volume, you know, for the hearing, you know, where you hear the, the lows are like, like less sensitive, you know, they like can kind of make up for the something you hear when you when it's loud, you know, so right. you have a boost 
in the frequency. And also, like the uh, you, we have to compensate a little bit for the uh, since it's a solid state class, the amplifier, you know, they react different with the speaker camera impedance. You know, usually the tube amps create some kind of peak around you know 100 hertz. You know, right? Um, which the solid state don't they don't do that. So you have to kind of kind of create that artificially. Uh, you know, and that's like. So that the bass kind of makes that happen, you know, like the more you turn it in, the more it creates that kind of illusion as the tube up there. So it's very important for the kind of tube feel, you know, and uh, Yeah, that makes experience. sense. Yeah, so it's pushing yeah. that, like, that resonant 100 hertz frequency or approximately yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. yeah and yeah, last yeah, but yeah. by no means least, first and foremost, thanks for taking the time. But secondly, it's a small amp, but it doesn't sound small, and it's really, really loud. And what's cool, too, is when you turn it up, it doesn't collapse on itself or get harsh or sterile i mean was that part of the intention to you i could see people in clubs playing with this amplifier and the sandman oh, saying yeah. hey you have to turn that down it's too damn loud i mean you could absolutely play it. i mean if you have a 412 i mean this thing is pretty damn loud you know i mean yeah. uh, <laughs> and and forget about in your apartment you you get the cops in front of your door in no time you know i mean <laughs> this thing is loud but you know, uh, so like it, this as a backup on the road, it, it could be a, a you know really a saver. You know, sometimes you know, in certain situations, you know, if, if something breaks down with your regular rig, you know, it can get you through the night. You know, or you know, better have two in stereo. You know, or there like thirty six, like Stevie Ronson would do. You know, and you can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your- thirty six. Think about it. <laughs> You that know? would be fun. Don't plant that scene in this And it edge. wouldn't break the bank. Yeah. Yeah. I can see Ingve doing that in, in a future video of 36 mini ecstasy minis. Yeah. Reinhold, I can't thank you enough for taking the time once again. And you, well, you've made my day a lot of fun because I really enjoyed doing this demo because I love playing. And when it feels and sounds right, even though I'm not very good, I play better or at least I leave happy and I'm very happy today. So... Thank you, my friends, and congratulations on this because this is a cool, cool amplifier. And as you said, it's small, it looks cute, it's a, not a toy, even though it might look like one. It'll right. look, look great in your office or in your dorm or your bedroom. It would look good on stage. Absolutely. And, um, in, your, in, your, in your kid's room, you know, start you to go. get them play early. Get them into it. <laughs> so there you have it. Any you know? parents watching this? Get one for your newborn. They'll need it. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Thanks for taking Absolutely. the time, my friend. Um, stay safe. Thank you for having me, Nick. And my hopefully- pleasure. And thanks for doing such a good work there. You know, at Sweetwater. It's awesome. You know, thank Great. you so much. Thank you. I will send you a check in the mail as a thank you for that. Last <laughs> right. Take care, my friend. Bye. Cheers. And there you have it, my friend. The Bogner Ecstasy Mini 30 Watt Guitar Head. It sounds great. It feels great, it's fun to play, and gosh darn it, it looks great too. Admit it, come on, admit it. You want one, pick up that phone, order it now. I know I'm gonna. Incidentally, the cabinet I've been playing through is a Bogner 112C, which is a one x 12 cabinet loaded with a vintage 30 Celestion speaker. If you'd like to know more about the Ecstasy Mini Head, or any Bogner product for that matter, Please go to our website, or better still, call your sales engineer, and he or she will be only too happy to guide you through its many, many wonderful features. That said, I'm out. See ya! Thank you so very, very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment nicely, please, and also subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Have a simply splendid day, Squire. Cheerio!